to Ohio. This is, I would say it's astonishing. It's really just par for the course. Pete Buttigieg is the Secretary of Transportation. Now, he wanted this job. Hmm. He didn't want to be, he was offered some other stuff. This was the job he wanted because he thought it would be prestigious and easy and could just fly around, ribbon-cutting ceremonies, talking about infrastructure. It has turned out to be one of the most critical jobs in the entire country. Now, if you were, uh, a, you know, if he was the man he presents himself as, this would be an opportunity to rise to the occasion, demonstrate to the American people his, his competence, his concern, his care for supply chains, for rail lines, for airline passengers. But instead, he doesn't do any of that. I mean, he seems to be, number one, thoroughly incompetent. Number two, completely asleep at the switch. So again, par for the course. He was speaking at the Nas National Association of Counties, supposed to be touting their infrastructure project, which again is the only thing he really cares about because it doesn't require him to do anything, just like, you know, trot around the country like some little celebrity. Says nothing, nothing in this speech about this massive ecological catastrophe that is unfolding in the state of Ohio. Instead, this is what he has to talk about. To work with your contractors, uh, to work with your community colleges on building a workforce that reflects the community. We have heard way too many stories from generations past of infrastructure where you got a, a neighborhood, often a neighborhood of color, that finally sees the project come to them, but everyone in the hard hats on that project looking like, uh, uh, you know, doing, doing the good paying jobs, don't look like they came from anywhere near the neighborhood. Right. You can build community wealth that will help close wealth ga gaps in this country if we can tear down those barriers. But that happens at the delivery level. Yeah, that's what this guy is focused on, about workplace diversity. When there's a goddamn train derailed and toxic chemicals that are being spewed well, out into the public. Like, you can what? Just, what? You can just see so clearly, yeah. like, he did really poorly in his presidential campaign with anyone who was, I mean, he didn't do that well overall, mm -hmm. but he did pretty well with white people and nobody else, okay? He got like, what, 1% of the black vote in South Carolina. It was path yes. a pathetic performance. And he has no idea how to actually appeal to people. So he thinks this is the way to further his presidential ambitions rather than actually deal with the very real problems that are in his portfolio that he is supposed to be focused on. Guess what? I'm sure there are some black folks in Ohio who are concerned about this train derailment. More to the point, Everybody in America would like to see you actually do your job and deliver for the people who are relying on you to deliver for them. So that's Pete. Um, meanwhile, we are getting more details about exactly what is going on in Ohio, and it's quite scary. You know, we've been talking about the fact, so this train uh, derailed. There was a lot of corporate uh, malfeasance and corruption that basically went into creating the conditions of this derailment. So that's story number one. We had a great guest on yesterday who talked about that. But as this is all unfolding, you know, the residents of, of East Palestine have been given the, the all clear, everything's fine, you can go about your business, go back to your homes, this is no problem, we took care of it. But the reports from on the ground are quite different. And uh, local news had a, uh, tox a hazardous material expert on who is warning about the potential effects of what was released here in some pretty stark terms. Let's take a listen to what he had to say basically nuked to town with chemicals so we could get a railroad open. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency sent a letter to Norfolk Southern stating that ethylene glycol monobutyl ether, ethylexoacrylate, and isobutylene were also in the rail cars that were derailed, breached, or on fire. So he says there, we basically nuked a town with chemicals so we could get a railroad open and goes on to express concern about future cancer clusters, mm -hmm. which given that what was released here in this controlled controlled release was uh, is a known carcinogen. So uh, meanwhile, on the ground, you know, we're, we're lucky to have a couple partners who have done great reporting here. Lever News has done some of the yes. best reporting about the uh, corruption that and the, and the greed that led to this situation to start with. And uh, Status Quo has been on the ground interviewing residents. Um, Jordan Sheridan of Status Quo talked to a fox keeper who had one of his foxes died and others of them clearly visibly ill after the release of these toxic chemicals. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. At the vet, they've tested the blood levels and there's raised liver enzymes and the chloride levels in the blood are on the high end of normal. 
and the lungs are inflamed. There's um, the eye irritation and there is neurological issues going on, which is also things that can happen from the chloride, uh, vinyl chloride exposure. And I have others that also have neurological issues that just, they're not themselves at all from it. And I'm really worried. And just to give you a sense, this isn't cherry picked. Um, there are a lot of reports coming from locals who are there on the ground. Um, this one was on TikTok. Uh, someone who was taking a look at the, what they describe as hundreds of dead fish that are turning up in the streams there. Let's take a look at that. I think it's important for people to see the dead fish. Um, I'm gonna walk under the bridge here above and show you. Coming right up, another fish. Um, there's hundreds of them up here. So hundreds of dead fish, other animals like foxes that are dying. Um, National Journal actually Sagar had a good report where they talked to people who were on the ground. And you're talking about people who even after the all clear was given, they they didn't come back fully to their homes, but they went back just to get something that they needed, you know, an, an ID, something else. So they're literally in and out. Eyes are watering um, and burning and headaches. And this is after they've been told, oh, it's it's all good. It, it's all fine. That report, this is this just breaks my heart um, to give you a sense of what people are going through there. Talk about a woman named Andrea Belden who noticed her two-year-old cat, Leo, lying motionless, heart racing and breathing labored, remained that way overnight. He was found to have congestive heart failure. Fluid filled around his heart and lungs. His liver enzymes shot up. Medication was not working. He wasn't moving. He wasn't eating, wasn't drinking, wasn't going to the bathroom. To continue treatment, she would have had to come up with 18 thousand dollars so she went to the railway north norfolk southern and said hey listen the vet says this is connected to what you all did um pay like let me keep my cat alive they said no maybe in the future fat lot of good that does her now and she had to put the cat to sleep and even after putting the cat down she still owes almost ten thousand dollars for the treatment that leo had already received just horrible just to give you a sense of you know one small piece of the nightmare that people are going through and then of course people are terrified of what is this doing to my kids what is this doing to me what does this mean for my future and so far there's no indication that norfolk southern has you know any plan to pay people for anything close to the damages that they have likely incurred here. oh yeah and look i mean you know we've covered here the reunions were warning about this i mean that goes back to why the railway deal was a crime in the first place and then second i mean where is our where's our government like yes Pres uh, president biden has there's two prob the biggest stories in the country in my estimation right now are ufos and ohio he hasn't said a word about either of them where are you and then his deputized people you know one is abroad talking about you know oh we haven't recovered any debris yet the other one is talking about workplace diversity <laughs> i mean we have no confidence that anything is going to happen listen if i was one of those people there's no way in hell i'm going back yeah to town not a, a chance time. you yeah. know there's a, a guy who i, I have no idea the credibility right. of this guy but he's on tiktok and he seemed like he knew what he was talking yeah. about it seemed like he was a chemist sure. he had sort of like detailed knowledge about this particular chemical and the way it interacts with water and air and what temperature it boils at etc but one thing he said that definitely rang true for me based on what I've observed for the news is he said, listen, I study these industrial accidents all the time because it was like a particular fascination for him. He's like, the pattern is always the same. The company puts out the most positive, like Damn. optimistic statement about what's going on. The politicians, they don't know right. and sometimes are in you know bed with these people. And so they just parrot whatever the corporate line ultimately is. The media is not expert on what these chemicals are and what the fallout effects might be, et cetera, et cetera. So they also just parrot whatever the politicians are saying. So ultimately what you're getting in all of these incidents in terms of the first blush impression is usually just whatever the corporate line is. And so that's why I too would be deeply skeptical that it is actually safe in the area that adequate testing has been done that they even know what the potential fallout of such a thing could be. I mean, we've never had a situation before with this much of this particular chemical and being burned and how much seeped into the ground and how much went out in the air. And now we know that it seeped into the Ohio River Basin. What does that mean? 
I think one thing that we've, you know, we see with the UFOs too, is like, they pretend like they, oh, we we're super competent and we know what's going on. We've got this lockdown. They don't really know, especially the local, but they're guessing. The media is guessing. And so I would take a lot more seriously the people who are living there, who are trying to go about their daily lives and are continuing to see and experience directly negative effects of whatever the hell happened here. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to stay on it, guys. Yeah, 100%. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.